and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. And this, of course, is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets beneath the surface on the prowl for that sector rotation that certainly presented itself last week into technology. And beyond that, we did see some pretty strong economic data, retail sales numbers in December jumped, consumer sentiment also jumped. And when you look at that GDP, by the way, first uh, Q4 GDP data is due next week, the consumer spending portion of GDP accounts for almost two thirds of that number. So this strong retail sales number did push the needle back as far as investors anticipation of a rate hike I'm sorry, a rate cut in March, and that has declined. We'll talk about interest rates today as well. Also, we did see home builder confidence jump this month, and that was good news for select home building stocks. Another news overseas, China's GDP data came in and it showed the slowest growth since 1976. So of course you wanna keep that global piece of the picture in mind. And last up next week, we're also going to receive some core inflation data. That's going to be PCE, very closely watched by the Federal Reserve. We have seen here over the last week plus that inflation data is still moving the markets. And here we are with a daily price chart of the S&P 500. And as you can see, this week's gain was primarily taking place today on Friday with that gap up on above average volume. In turn, the S&P 500 has now hit a new record high. We can go ahead and pull up a monthly chart of the S&P 500 and you will see that we are in fact at a new high in price, which in turn gives the markets quite a bit more leeway to continue to trade higher. And also on this monthly chart, you can see the MACD crossover into positive territory with further upside or more upside real estate ahead, likewise with the RSI. Also on the daily chart of the S&P 500, that RSI is above that 50 in positive territory, trending higher, likewise with the MACD. From here, we'll take a quick look at the NASDAQ composite, which also posted a sizable day today up 1.7% so that the index was up 2.2% for the week. This is another base breakout experience here with the NASDAQ. And of note, this MACD black line up through the red has just posted a bullish crossover today, signaling that this new uptrend has been confirmed. And we also have an RSI in positive territory and heading higher. And from here, let's go ahead and take a look at what is taking shape beneath the surface of the markets. I talked about sector rotation, and this particular view is a two-month daily price chart view of the 11 sectors within the S&P 500. And I did go ahead and add that RSI indicator in descending order. This is all about helping you uncover where that relative strength is, those money flows, where are they taking shape so that, of course, you can participate and take advantage of that. Also, this view will provide you with sector rotation information because it's not going to be really critical that these moves are going to be indicating what was up last week. Rather, we're on the lookout for a steady progression from these lower, weaker areas up to the forefront. And likewise, if we are seeing strong areas turn weak, you will see a progression down to this lower, weaker area from this strength. But let's go ahead and take a look. This week, the broader markets move was all about technology. This is XLK, that technology sector it was up over 4%. And we can see this progression, this two-day gap 
up with the MACD experiencing the black line up through the red, indicating that this new uptrend has been confirmed. Now we are in a bit of an overbought position here with that RSI up here above 70. However, we can see that that can be retained before we need to experience at least a pause and potentially a pullback. I'll get more into this with my MEM Edge report as over the weekend, but let's go ahead and take a look at the next sector up here, and it is Communication Services XLC. Not up near as much, up 1.3%, but still a nice gap up into a one-week base breakout with that MACD crossover, and there were several reasons for this particular sector to be up. Certainly, Meta Platform and Alphabet were up two and a half percent on average, and that's going to have a big weighting. From here, I will share with you a longer term monthly chart, communication services and tech were two areas that I highlighted in my show two weeks ago, talking about my anticipated move for this year. And we can see this is what I was highlighting with XLC. We did have that MACD crossover on the monthly and a move into positive territory. And by way of this view, you can see that potentially we have much further possible upside, certainly relative to this 2020 move out of that 2020 bear market. Also, likewise, with that RSI, we do have much more upside potential there. Also, we can take a quick look at technology on that monthly chart as well to give you an equally long-term outlook, and you will see similar view here with these technicals and the momentum shift into positive territory. Also of note is the fact on this monthly, we can see the RSI in technology remain overbought. And in this case, for a multi-year period, we are just entering into a possible area of overbought. Now, let's go ahead and move through some of these other sectors and take a look at some of these other areas. Healthcare up here at the forefront, it did underperform. And realistically, a majority of the S&P 500 sectors did underperform for the week. And that is all about the fact that technology was the primary driver and some of these other areas exhibiting weakness. Now, you do also want to note that utilities, energy are both remaining down here in this lower quartile and continuing to exhibit weakness. Also, this is real estate down 2.2%. Certainly utilities and real estate would not benefit from a rising interest rate environment, but other dynamics at play as well. I talked about earnings being a big driver of those stocks that did go on to either outperform or underperform this past week. Let's take a Quick look at financials. They did recover later in the week. A number of bank stocks reported last week. Mixed results. They did exhibit weakness until today's rally. Keeping an eye on this because financials are due to majority of them will again be big will also be releasing their earnings. So let's go ahead beyond the sector view and drill down further. We want to uncover within these various sectors where the out and underperformance has taken shape. And let's take a look front and center. Semiconductor stocks up almost 8% for the week. Take a look at this MACD crossover, black line up through the red. This is SOXX, the semiconductor ETF. And a majority of that move was today's 4% rally on a gap up into a base breakout. And this is all about earnings. I'll share with you at this time, the stock that really propelled. Semis had already been on the move higher, showing firmness. But the big mover this week was Taiwan Semi. They reported earnings. Take a look at this gap up on that earnings release. Very heavy volume. And it did help propel other stocks higher because the outlook for chip demand 
had been weak going into this year. However, TSM being the largest supplier of chips and their bullish outlook really helped propel this particular stock higher. In the next segment, I will share with you a way that you can participate or at least know when a good entry point can be on a name after it gaps up on heavy volume. Also, taking a look at some of these other sectors here, I did want to share with you other areas that were on the move higher last week. And next up is software stocks. And this is an area both I'm very heavily weighted in my MEM Edge report. They are growth areas. I talked about that move of interest rates higher, but we are still seeing these names propel higher as well. So 2.3% gain in software. Again, that MACD black line up through the red, confirming a new uptrend. These are the two areas that did help propel growth stocks and technology higher. But there is one other name while we are on this topic that did help the move into growth stocks as well. And that was a Bank of America upgrade on Apple. Apple had really been faltering relative to those other magnificent seven names, but that upgrade did give investors confidence propelled Apple back into an uptrend because it is now trading above each of its moving averages. We have a positive RSI now, and we are on the cusp and actually are experiencing a MACD crossover. Nice high volume here, all very constructive for Apple on top of the fact that it did post this double bottom formation. So TSM and Apple, big drivers, for that move into tech as the week progressed. Moving through, taking a look at some of these other areas, IHI is the medical products area, flat for the week, but attractive in the sense that it did experience a very orderly pullback to this 10-day moving average, and then a nice bounce higher. Not a whole lot by way of momentum, but I will tell you one of the names, we only have two names in this space on my MEM Edge suggested holdings list, and this was is one of them, ISRG, continuing to propel higher. When you see these stocks have a gap up such as ISRG, they pre-announced their earnings last week, you will want to add this five-day simple moving average, which can then act as support, but more importantly, as a buy point on pullbacks to that shorter-term moving average. And we can also note last week, nice high volume as the stock continues to trend higher. Now, from here, I also wanted to share with you some of these other subgroupings here so that you are aware of what's taking shape. I talked about bank stocks and financials, and overall, they had been rallying going into earnings, but for the most part, had pulled back in response to management's outlook regarding their growth prospects going forward. There was talk that loan demand could, in fact, recede and that was, of course, not good news, but we did see that today's rally did get that momentum on that RSI back into positive territory on the prowl for that MACD to confirm. But at this time, they are generally underperforming. This bank group was up less than 1%, but certainly better than other areas. Let's take a look at XRT. This is the S&P 500 retail ETF. And surprising weakness here, given the fact that we did see strong retail sales data for November and December and strong consumer confidence. So there are pockets of strength in this area, but at this point in time, continuing to pull back. This is a generally equal weighted as ETF and then also primarily does traffic in internet related retailers. There are bright spots in this area that I will share with you as we move through today. So let's go ahead from here and take a look at some of the price action last week, those bigger movers. I talked about the concept of being able to use an intraday chart 
to drill down as your guide. Let's take a look at Taiwan Semi, TSM. And of course, this particular stock had a big gap up, huge volume. And this is something that I cover in my courses, where if you see a stock exhibit a gap up on earnings on big volume, you can anticipate further upside. So in order to participate, I would tell you to go to an intra day chart. And we are looking at a 15 minute chart of TSM. And you can see that the stock has remained above the five and 13 simple moving average as we moved into today's close. And generally speaking, going into today, yesterday's big upside momentum did dwindle a bit here. That is not particularly bad news. It's just stating that the powerful buying that initiated that move higher has receded a bit. So from here, you'll go ahead and take a look at an hourly price chart. And again, using a 5 and 13 simple moving average. Now, from here, you can see that TSM is very clearly overbought, that RSI above 70. You can see that MACD black line poised to potentially cross below the red and in with an eye toward a potential pullback. So from here, what I do want to share with you is what to be on the lookout for. And there'll be other examples as well for a really good confidence that that downtrend has reversed. First up, you'll be on the lookout for the stock once it does get below these moving averages, for it to get back above those moving averages and the momentum back into positive territory. For now, we are still in a constructive phase for TSM. What I just shared with you is when we see a pullback, what you will want to be on the lookout for. Let's take a look at another stock that was on the move in the semiconductor space, and I'm sure we can point to many of them today. This is Marvell Technology, M-R-V-L. And what I did want to point out to you are a couple of characteristics with this particular stock, namely that we did experience a nice lengthy base breakout, taking us back to July of last year. Historical precedence tells us that the longer your base breakout, oftentimes the longer your advance out of that base. And we can see relatively nice high volume here, positive momentum with that RSI and that MACD. And this is another stock that gapped up into a nice uptrend. From here, let's go ahead and drill down to that intraday. I know many of you are probably not that familiar with using this view, but when you are in a period or looking at a group that is seeing a lot of upside momentum, it can really be quite helpful as far as pinpointing a possible entry point. So MRVL on that 15 minute, and this is a good example of that pullback that certainly would be anticipated at some point in time. MRVL on yesterday's gap up did pull back. We did see the stock move below this shorter term simple moving average. But let's take a look because on that pullback, the momentum RSI stayed above 50. So you could stay with the stock even though it did close below or at least move below these moving averages. And then the stock did regain its upside here. Also of note is that MACD stayed in positive territory as well. And then a bit of a crossover signaling today's upside price action. From here, I did want to go ahead and share with you a view of other names that have experienced space breakouts. We talked about retail stocks, but I did mention there are bright spots and among them are footwear of all things. And this is Skechers SKX. These companies are continuing to exhibit growth. And also highlighting that is the fact 
that their growth prospects are bullish going forward. So Skechers is a name that did experience a nice base breakout this week. We're on the cusp of that black line up through the red to confirm this new uptrend and then nice upside price action on that RSI. So looking very constructive there. Other names that we can take a quick look at in the Big tech area is big blue. That's IBM. And let's take a look because the company is due to report their earnings next week. So we are experiencing a rally going in to that number. A lot of that having to do with the company's strong earnings release the prior quarter, which in turn propelled the stock into a nice uptrend. What we can see that took place this week is a base breakout, and then today a gap up. And this is all about analysts revising their estimates, earnings estimates higher going into earnings. And this is something that you will see and experience throughout earnings season. I would urge you to keep on top of those analyst upgrades for those companies that are due to report, because oftentimes these analysts will not revise their estimates higher going into earnings unless they have some insight or strong reasons. They're not going to put their neck out on the their neck on the line going into their report. So we'll keep an eye on this one. You can see that MACD crossover and then nice bullish price action on that RSI. Another company that is due to report, we actually have several semiconductor stocks due to report their numbers next week. Texas Instruments among them, but you can see this gap up today is in line with the group. Overall, the chart is not the most constructive, a name that I like much better in the semi space that's due to report earnings next week is LAM Research. And you can see that this gap up multi-day did in turn push the stock out of a nice three-week base, nice high volume, and we're just getting that max D crossover. LAM Research is in a sub-industry grouping within semis that is experiencing more upside momentum because of TSM's numbers. Last up here, we'll take a look at another semi that's due to report next week, and that is ASML Holdings. Not the prettiest of charts. It did fall backward here in the beginning of the year, all about chip sales to China and uncertainty around that. However, this week, big outperformer, high volume. So we can also see that MACD crossover just taking shape. We'll be keeping an eye, certainly in my work, at their earnings and see if they are going to continue to show growth prospects that could help propel semiconductors higher. I talked about housing stocks and the bullish data that came out last week. This is a view of XHB, and that's the S&P 500 Home Builders ETF. And you can see that it did have a nice late week rally. I'm also going to share a longer term view because this sideways price action that has shaped up over the last four weeks is really in response to this significant move November into December rally, and it is digesting and consolidating from that advance. From here, we can take a look at a monthly chart. And what I did want to share with you is when home builders get going, they can really outperform. We are in a period of continued high demand amid short supply of these home builders. If we see interest rates continue to decline, we could see this group continue to advance. A company that is due to report their earnings next week in this home building space is DR Horton, DHI. And you can see this nice orderly back and fill period of consolidation that is shaping up. Very tight price action going into their earnings report. And we'll see if, of course, will they come out with strong numbers because they have done so in the past. What you'll be on the lookout for is a base breakout above this high at about 156. And from there, we could expect another leg. I'm going to leave it there, guys. I hope you have a great weekend.
If you like what you've seen, go ahead and hit that like button and comments are always welcome. In particular, if there are any questions, any areas you would like to see reviewed next week, I'd like to hear about that as well. Hope you have a great weekend. See you here next Friday.